This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you everyone for coming. We want to thank and welcome all of our Torah Anytime viewers. I'm very excited to present to you this information this evening. As we begin to prepare for the Yom of Pesach, Habaleinu Lataiva. And we begin with a very uh, well-known stanza in the Haggadah. Rabbi Yehuda Hayanoisein Bohem Simonim. Rabbi Yehuda would give a mnemonic, a trick, a way to remember the ten makos. Rashi Teva is an acronym, an acrostic. And what is it? Tetzach Adash Biachav. Right? Everybody's familiar with this. Tetzach Adash Biachav. Of course, that stands for Dom, Sephardea, Kinim, Aroiv, Dever, Shechin, Barad, Arbe, Choshech, and Makas, Bechairos. And Rabbi Yisai, the question is, that what is Rabbi Huda doing? Rabbi Huda is giving us a mnemonic to remember the ten makos. Why do I need a mnemonic? It's so difficult to remember the makos. The makos is the easiest thing in the world to remember. My two-year-old kid, who never stepped foot in yeshiva yet, knows and can tell you all ten makos. And I need Rabbi Huda, the Tana, needs to come up with a mnemonic to help me remember what the makos are. I mean, anyone who ever listened to Uncle Moshe <laughs> knows, knows the makos. You know, let's say the sons of Yaakov Avinu, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, right? There are 12 of them. They're more than the Makos. Nobody ever came up with a mnemonic to remember Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda. And for some reason, when it comes to the, uh, the Makos, what, people are still drunk from Purim, that they need a, a mnemonic to help them remember the Makos? What's the Indian over here? What is the Indian of Rabbi Yehuda, Hayanoisin, Mahem, Simonim, Tetzach, Adash, Viachav? Okay, we have over here the Rambam, and Hilchais Chameitz Umatza, Tarek Zayin Halach and Alpha Base. The Rambam is delineating to us. He's explaining to us what is the mitzvah of Sipur Yitzias Mitzrayim. The mitzvah of Sipur Yitzias Mitzrayim is one of the mitzvahs Da'iraisa that we perform the night of Pesach. Says the Rambam, Mitzvahs Asei Shel Torah. It is a biblical mitzvah. Lesaper Benisim the Neflois to discuss the miracles and wonders. Shenasu Lavaisein BeMitzrayim. That Hashem did to our forefathers in Mitzrayim, Belel Chamisha Asr Benisan. This mitzvah is incumbent upon us on the 15th day of Nisan. And the Rambam cites the Pasuk, Shenemar, Zachar, Es Hayoim, Hazet, Asher Yitzah, Sami Mitzrayim. Says the Rambam in Halacha Beis, What is the mitzvah? Says the Rambam, The mitzvah is to tell your children. Like the Pasuk says, Vihi Gare Talabincha. Depending on the intellectual stature of the child, that's how you have to explain it to the child. A kid who's not that bright, a kid who has not developed yet, you just tell the kid, you see the, the panya over here, you see the, the, the lady cleaning the dishes, not your wife, the, the cleaning lady, right? We were in Mitzrayim, we were avodim, like them, like her, like him. So the kid says, oh yeah, and what happened? And God took us out, fine. Says the Ramam, and what if, what if the kid is already developed? Now look at this, look very carefully. If the kid is more mature, you explain to him what happened in Mitzrayim, and the miracles that took place, through Moshe Rabbeinu, through Moshe. Isn't that interesting that the Rambam emphasizes that when you tell your kid about the events of Mitzrayim, you better explain to him, you know through whom? You know who the vehicle? You know who the emissary was? You know who the conduit to, to these miracles was? Moshe Rabbeinu. Really? Is really that, that so important? Where does it say anywhere in the Torah that when you say over the events of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, you must emphasize that it was through Moshe Rabbeinu. In fact, if you look through the Haggadah in many versions, Moshe Rabbeinu's name is not even mentioned in the Haggadah. So, and yet the Rambam is emphasizing that when you tell your kid about the mitzvah of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, you have to say, hey kid, not just God, God wasn't the one who did it, God did it through Moshe Rabbeinu. Why is it so important to get Moshe Rabbeinu into the mix? And this question is, um, this observation is found in the Sefer. Yesamach Av, 
Now, who wrote the Sefer Yisamachav? This was written by Rabbi Eli Baruch Shulman, who is a Rav in Flatbush, and very Chashev uh, Talmud Chacham. He's one of the Rosh Yeshiva in Yeshiva Rabbeinu Yitzchak Achanon. And also, he wrote the Art Scroll Elu Trefais, right? You know, that ain't an easy parak. And over Sukkis, I was uh, by my in-laws, and I was sitting at the table, and this Sefer was staring me in the face, so I opened it up. It's on Masech the Brachas and Psachim. And I read the Hakdama, and I said, Hey, wouldn't that be a good share for Pesach? So the moment the Yom Tov of Sukkot was over, I snuck out of my parents' house, and I went, he lives about five doors down on East 31st Street. I bought the Sefer from him, and Baruch Hashem, Hashem reminded me this week that uh, there's a very nice uh, piece over there, and that's what we're going to discuss this evening. A uh, piece, here he has a Haskama from Rav David Shustal, who writes that they were Chavrusas in Lakewood. Rashiva of Lakewood writes he was Chavrusas with Rabbi Shulman in Lakewood, with, under Rabbi Schneir Cutler. So he has a very interesting observation. Why does the Rambam emphasize that when you say over the events of Mitzrayim, you must point out it was Al Yedei Moshe Rabbein. Okay. Tonight we're going to discuss the laws of listening to a Navi. Right? There's something called a Navi, a prophet. Right? By the way, you know, in yeshivas, they don't really learn uh, Navi that much. You know why? Because uh, they're non for profit organization. <laughs> but, in any event, the Mishnah says in the Sechta Sanhedrin, the Mishnah says, Adaf pei tesam and alef. Navi hasheker, a false prophet, which is hamasnavi mashalai shama mashalai nemerlai, a prophet who relays something that God never told him, God, he never heard, misasai bidei adam, the Jewish courts will kill him. <clears throat> However, if God tells you, right, any of you, if God comes to you and tells you prophecy and you don't tell everybody else about it, or if you don't listen to the command of a Navi, or if God tells a Navi to do something and the Navi doesn't listen, the Navi is chayev misa bidei shamayim. Like the Pasuk says in Parsha Shoftim, Shenemar Anoichi Edroish Me'imai. Got it? The Navi comes into the room now and he says, From now on, I want everybody, Wednesday night, you have to order from this restaurant. Okay? If the Navi gives you a, a directive, then you're commanded biblically to listen to the Navi, and one who does not listen to the Navi is Chayev Misa Bideshamayim. Comes along the Minchas Chinuch, and the Minchas Chinuch asks a very strong question. Yeah? Anyone who violates the words of a Navi, as Chayev Misavidei Shamayim, listen carefully, who was the greatest Navi in history? Maish Rabbeinu. Well, if anyone who violates the words of a Navi, as Chayev Misavidei Shamayim, then it should come out, any time anyone does any Avera, they should be Chayev Misa, because they're not listening to Adoin Hanavim, Maish Rabbeinu. If in fact the Mishnah is telling us in Masech Sanhedrin, that anyone who is Mevater al Divrei Navi, anyone who... who goes against the Navi. Anyone who does not follow the, the directive of a Navi is Chayiv Misav De Shamayim. Then why would the Torah say, you know, this is a lav that you Chayiv Malkus for. And this is a lav that She'in by Maisa, you don't get Malkus. And this is a lav you Chayiv Misav De Shamayim. Every lav in the Torah should be subject to Misav De Shamayim because anyone who violates the word of a Navi is Chayiv Misav De Shamayim. It's a mission of Sanhedrin. In fact, if the Torah says to do a mitzvah, and you don't do the mitzvah, you should be chayiv misav bidei shamayim. After all, Moses told you to do the, mish- the mitzvah. Moshe Rabbeinu told you, listen to Parsha Zachar. Would anyone in their right mind say that you chayiv misav bidei shamayim for violating any lav in the Torah, or not fulfilling any mitzvah? <coughs> of course not. There's no such punishment. There's certain things that are lavin, certain things that are not say, certain things that are... <coughs> Lav um, by Maisa, Kares, and yet, Asimin Chaschinoch, if there is a Mishnah that says, then if you violate anything in the Torah, you should be Chayav Shamayim. This is the question of the Menchaschinoch. Got it? Why are there different punishments in the Torah if anyone who violates the word of the Navi is Chayav Misavdei Shamayim? Comes along with Chayim Brisker, the Grach, Chayim Halevi. And he says like this, very ambiguous statement, a very mysterious statement. When Moshe Rabbeinu told you something, 
It was not prophecy. It was not nevuah. It was Tyra. If Moshe said something, it wasn't nevuah. It was Tyra. So for instance, if someone doesn't put on tefillin, you're not chayim misobi de shamayim. Why? Because you didn't violate the words of the Navi. You violated the Tyra. If somebody put on shatness, they're not chayim misobi de shamayim because they didn't violate nevuah. They violated Tyra. Tyra is different than nevuah. You can't put a Navi on top of a Chumash, because a Navi is what we call Midivrei Kabbalah, and a Chumash is Tyra. Neviim is not Tyra, Neviim is prophecy. Moshe Rabbeinu was a Navi, but when Moshe Rabbeinu told you something, he wasn't saying it as Nevuah, he was saying it as Tyra. Yeah, but what's that supposed to mean? At the end of the day, Moshe Rabbeinu is a Navi. He's Adoin HaNeviim. He's the greatest of all the prophets. And if you don't listen to him, not only have you violated Tyra, you violated prophecy also. So why would there not be a penalty that if someone violates a mitzvah in the Torah, they should be chayim misa b'dei shamayim? And as to say for Yisam Achav, that doesn't really help us that much. Because let's say Megillah Sester. Why do you have to hear the Megillah on Purim? Does it say it in the Torah? No. Is it a halacha? It's more than a halacha. It's me divrei neviim. Esther and Mordechai, who were prophets, ordained, you have to hear the, the Megillah. Would anyone in their right mind say that someone is chayiv miso b'dei shamayim if they don't hear the Megillah? Of course not. They're just violating the words of the Navi. But if the, but if the Mishnah says, if someone violates the words of the Navi, the chayiv misa, why wouldn't you be chayiv misa for not hearing Megillah Esther? Or let's say, the halach of Oineg Shabbos. Where does it say you have to have Oineg on Shabbos? It's not in the Torah. Who? The Navi Yeshaya, Vikarasa, the Shabbos, Oineg. And then, where do we learn out? Kavod Shabbos? The Lekdoi Shashem Mechubat. So is anyone going to say if someone doesn't have Oineg Shabbos, or Chayim Misa B'nei Shamayim? But it should come out, you are. Because you're violating the word of Yeshaya. Or if someone doesn't hear Megillah Esther, they're violating the Nevuah of Mordechai and Esther. Or let's say Amir Laakum. Amir Laakum is also possibly Midivrei Kabbalah, Midivrei Nevi'im. The Daber Davar. Or Mimtzai Chavtzicha. Or there are many halachas that are derived from the Nevi'im and no one in their right mind says Yechayv Misa Bidei Shamayim for violating the words of the Navi. So the question is, we're just expanding the question of the Minchas Chinuch. Minchas Chinuch is asking that anybody who violates anything in the Torah should be Chayv Misa Bidei Shamayim. So you want to say Rav Chaim's Torah that... Moshe Rabbeinu was saying, Torah, not Nevuah, fine. But there are many halachos that are derived from the Navi, and yet you're not chayiv misbeh shamayim. So the question is, Rabbi Isai, when does the rule apply that the Mishnah says in Sanhedrin, in number 5, and the Tesem and Aleph, that anyone who violates the word of the Navi is chayiv misbeh shamayim? When does that apply? <coughs> Let's learn some psukim in, in Parsha Shoftim that discuss the union of Listening to a Navi. Look at number 9. Parsha Shoftim. Yerches. Tezvav. Through Yutes. Pasuk says like this. Navi. Mikir b'cha. Me'achecha. Kamayni. Moshe Rabbeinu says. A prophet. From among you. From your brothers. Will rise up. Elov Tishmon. You got to listen to him. That is a mitzvah. Sasei doi raisa. You see those words? Perak Yerches. Pasuk Tezvav. Elov. Tishma'un. You got to listen to him. Says the Torah, why is God sending you a Navi? Very interesting. So Hashem tells Moshe, Moshe, you know on Har Sinai, when I was teaching Torah to Kal Yisrael, Kal Yisrael said, you know what? Can't take it anymore. We don't want to hear the word of God. We don't want to see the fire of God. It's too much for us to handle. So therefore God says, if they can't listen to me directly, I will send my word through the emissary of the Navi. And whatever I tell the Navi to tell them, if the Jews don't listen, Pasuk Yotas, Anoichi Edroish Me'imai, I will seek them out. But, Pasuk Yotzai, Pasuk Chaf, but a Navi, that wantonly, people think that's why Jews eat Chinese food. No. Acha Novi, Asher Yozid, a Novi, that intentionally, Ladaber Dover Bishmi, that speaks in my name, Asher Loitzi Visiv, what I didn't command, then the Navi will die. 
Now look in Pasuk Chav Aleph. And if you're going to say, how are we supposed to know if the Navi represents the voice of God or he's acting independently? Look in the Pasuk Chav Beis. The Navi has to give you an ice, a sign. He has to make a miracle. He has to change nature. He has to make a prediction. If a Navi makes a prediction and the prediction comes true, then you know he's a Navi, and then there's a mitzvah of a love tishma'on, you have to listen to him. Says the Rambam, this is, this is a very fundamental principle now, look at number 10, the Rambam, says the Rambam, there's different types of prophecy. Sometimes God could tell a prophet something the prophet needs to know himself. Sometimes God could send the prophet to deliver a message to people, to change their ways. Says the Ramam at the end of Halacha Zayin in number 10. When the Navi knocks on the door and he says, Hey Rabbi Isai, you got you to gotta learn better. Next time you come to the Shir, take notes. Right? So the Navi says that. So you say, Who are you? Who are you to tell me what to do? I haven't taken notes since I was in first grade. Why do I have to take notes? So the, the Rambam says, my face." The Navi makes a sign. He says, You know why? You see this plate of hamburgers? Bam! Disappears. And he didn't eat it. Right? right? He makes it, oh, he made a miracle. Fine. I'm going to listen to you, Navi. He has to make a miracle. Says the Rambam, not every guy that makes miracles, we listen to him. He has to have already established his credentials as someone worthy to be a Navi. What do you have to do? That means he has excelled in Chachma. He has excelled in Maisim Toivim. He has pursued the path of holiness. He has pursued the path of separation. And then if he makes a miracle, you have to listen to him. Ends the Rambam, Shenemar Eivov Tishmon. So says the Sefer Yisam Achav, it is very clear from the Rambam that the mitzvah, you got the mitzvah? You may not have even been aware of there's such a mitzvah. It's a two-word mitzvah. Eilav Tishma'on. Listen to the Navi. Eilav Tishma'on. You see clearly in the Rambam that the primary ingredient of the mitzvah, Eilav Tishma'on, is what does the Navi have to do? He has to make, not everyone at once, a nice. He has to make a miracle. The Rambam says very clearly that the mitzvah of Eilav Tishma'on only kicks in if the Navi makes a miracle. So you have a big Talmud Chacham. He walks in. He says, do this. You got to listen to him. But it's not a mitzvah that say the Raisa of Elof Tishman. The mitzvah of Elof Tishman is only if the Navi makes a miracle. If he doesn't make a miracle, there's no mitzvah of Elof Tishman. That's clear in the Rambam. In fact, the Rambam in Parak Yod, Halacha Aleph, look at number 12. The Rambam learns that if you look back in the Psukim, if you're going to say in your heart, how am I supposed to know if this guy is a real Navi or not? From Rashi on the parsha, it seems that the Torah is just telling you that you're going to be sometimes incredulous whether this guy is a Navi and I want you to know the Navi is going to make a miracle and then you're going to believe him. But the Rambam learns that the Torah is not just telling you a story. The Rambam learns the Torah is giving you the absolute ingredient necessary to be required to listen to the Navi. And that is... You know when you're chayiv to listen to the Navi? When you ask the Navi, who are you? And he says, who am I? And he pulls a rabbit out of his hat. That's who I am. He makes a miracle. Only, says the Rambam, look in number, number 12, that a Navi who makes a prediction or makes a miracle, then you're chayiv to listen to him. Like the Pasuk says, v'chisoymar, bovavecha, eicha neida sadar. So Rabbi, so we're learning a very important thing. We're learning today that one of the 613 mitzvahs in the Torah is you have to listen to a Navi provided that the Navi performed a miracle to you. Let us digress and let us talk about the greatest Navi in history and that is Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu is the greatest prophet in history. So you would think if Moshe is the greatest prophet he must have performed the greatest miracle in history. Uh Uh-uh. Moshe Rabbeinu, in fact, did not have to perform any miracles 
to authenticate his prophecy and to verify his prophecy. Says the Ram, I'm looking number 14. If you came here this entire year just to hear the next five minutes, it's Kadam. Says the Rambam. This is one of the most fundamental concepts in Jesus. Moshe, this is in Rambam, Hilchos Yisoy, Dei HaTayra, Perek Ches, Halacha Al. Moshe Rabbeinu, Loi Ha'aminu, Ba Yisrael, Mevnei Oisai Sha'asa. The Jewish people do not believe in Moshe because of any miracle that he did. You know what we say, Moshe split the sea? We say, eh, Shkaya. Moshe, Meidam, Tzfardeya, very nice, wonderful. Moshe Rabbeinu, all the Bechorahs dropped dead. Okay, very nice, good to know. Why? Why don't we believe in Moshe because of the miracles that he did? If you believe in something because of a supernatural occurrence, you cannot, your heart will not accept it as foolproof. Who knows? It's magic. It's an optical illusion. It's black. It's kishof. The only reason Moshe made miracles is out of necessity. The Egyptians were annoying us. Let's get rid of them. The sea was in our way. Split the sea. Kairach was challenging Moshe. Bye bye, Kairach. We'll see you later. Right? Moshe Rabbeinu did not make miracles to prove himself. We don't believe. If you believe in Moshe Rabbeinu, because Moshe did supernatural things, then you got to change that, because that is not the Jewish religion. We don't believe in Moshe Rabbeinu because of any supernatural thing. So, so why do we believe in him? Says the Rambam a few lines down. Uve boy. Why do we believe in him? Because b'maymed har sinai she'einenu ro'u v'loi zar v'yoznenu shomu v'loi acha at maymed har sinai. We saw Moshe Rabbeinu step up to the plate, step up to the mountain. <coughs> and God said, Moshe, Moshe, I want to tell you something. And we heard the voice of God, and we saw Moshe receive the word of God. We saw the fire, we saw the kailos, we saw the torches, Moshe approached the thick cloud, we heard the voice of God, God said, Moshe, Moshe, go tell the Jews this. The Pasuk says, Panim, Bipanim, Diber, Hashem, Imachem. We saw God and Moshe. You ever see two people talk, right? So they're looking at each other, they're conversing. We saw on one side of the table, God Almighty. On the other side of the table, Moshe Rabbeinu. We saw it. So Moshe Rabbeinu is going to come down. Oh, I'm Moshe. He's going to pull a rabbit out of his hat. Ridiculous. We don't need any rabbits. We don't need any, any snakes or sticks or blood or being, being Mechaye Mesim. It's all worthless. We don't need it. It's extraneous. It's superfluous. We saw it. Nothing more. No, what else could you want? We saw with our own eyes. Says the Rambam. Rambam saying, I'm going out on a limb over here. I'm saying that all the miracles that ever happened in the Torah are really not necessary to make Moshe credible. Where in the Torah does it say that we don't believe in Moshe because of miracles? Says the Rambam. Hashem tells Moshe. I will come to you in the thickness of the cloud so that the people should hear when I spoke to you and only then they will believe in you forever but that means when Moshe split the sea we said Moshe very nice he split the sea if I would know, you know, your magic book, I would also split the sea, maybe. I mean, it's pretty impressive. I can't do it myself. And, you know, it looks pretty good. And chances are, this is God. But you know what, Moshe? I'm not ready to sign my life away to this religion just because he split the sea. Says the Rabbim, not until Har Sinai were the Jews convinced that Moshe Rabbeinu was Adon Nevi'im. And today, we are only convinced because we saw it. If we didn't see it, we wouldn't be convinced. The Ramam continues in Halacha Beis. It comes out that those people who Moshe was sent to, that's us, we were the witnesses. In other words, Moshe didn't have to pull any tricks. He didn't have to make any magic. He didn't have to bring a, you know, the kid back to life like the Elisha. He didn't have to make the walls of Yerichai fall. He didn't have to split the sea. He didn't need to do anything. We saw God speak to him. Case closed. 
finished. That's it. That's all we need to see. Says the Rambam. We ourselves are the witnesses. And that is why when Hashem first charged Moshe Rabbeinu with the mission of taking the Jews out of Mitzrayim, Hashem said, V'shamu l'kailecha, they'll listen to you. And you know what Moshe said? No, they're not. Why are they going to listen to me? Because you gave me a stick and I turned into a snake? I mean, that's the oldest trick in the book. They're going to... That's why they're going to believe in me? Lo yaminu li. They're not going to believe in me. And God says, you're right. You know what Hashem says? Here's the sign. When I take you out of Egypt, the proof, the ironclad proof that Moshe Rabbeinu got the Torah from God is there is no proof. It's as the biggest reality that exists. How do you know what proof do you have that the sun rose today? Because the temperature, right? Imagine if I asked you, how do you know the sun rose today? Well, you know, I was listening to the weather. And the weatherman said that from uh, sunrise till sunset, the, the, the uh, temperature got increasingly warmer. So that's how I know the sun rose. That's how you know the sun rose. You know how you know the sun rose? Because you saw it. And if you can't believe what you see, you can't believe anything. So you want to know, why do we believe in Moshe? Not because of anything special that Moshe did. We saw it with our own. Moshe never made a miracle to validate himself. So says the Sefer, Yisamach Av, Go'inus, very nice. Every other Navi, Yeshaya, Yermia, Yechezkel, if he says something, we say, why do I have to listen to you? So he says, ah, check this out. Bam. And he makes a trick. He makes an ace. So now we have to listen to him, Elav Tishma'an. Did Moshe Rabbeinu ever have to validate himself through an ace? Never. So that means that categorically, the mitzvah of Elav Tishman does not apply to Moshe Rabbeinu. Because the mitzvah of Elav Tishman is, when a Navi validates himself through an ace, you gotta listen to him. But Moshe Rabbeinu has been categorically excluded from the entire mitzvah of Elav Tishman. Because Moshe doesn't have to validate himself through a miracle. So therefore, if Moshe says something and you violate it, you know why you're not chayiv misavidei shamayim? Because there is no special mitzvah of a love tishman when it comes to Moshe. That's what Reb Chaim Brisker meant. When Moshe Rabbeinu says something, that's Torah. What's Torah? What's the definition of Torah? Not something that your grand, great-grandfather told you about. It's not, uh, you know, it's something we do culturally. Uh, you know, I have faith. I have a muna. No, no faith. You saw it. That's it. That's reality. Reality is that the Jewish people, three million people, saw Rebbeinu speak to Moshe Rabbeinu. You know, no event in the history of mankind has been authenticated by more eyewitnesses than the giving of the title. You know, even when the President of the United States was, was nominated... Inducted, inaugurated, all the above, right? There, are, how many people were there? A million. That's. And do you believe he's the president of the United States? <laughs> you know, we. <laughs> right, we still can't. <laughs> but there are only one million eyewitnesses. You know, more people saw the. There is no event in the history of the world authenticated by more eyewitnesses than the giving of the Torah. So you want to know, how do we prove that Moshe was... No, there's no proof. Moshe doesn't need proof. Moshe is Torah. Torah means you saw it with your own eyes. So therefore, the whole mitzvah of a love tishman, Moshe Rabbeinu is categorically excluded from. And that is why... This is the answer to the Minchas Chinas question. Minchas Chinas wants to know, well, if there's a mitzvah to listen to the Navi, and if you don't, you chayim the shvan, so then any time you violate anything in the Torah, you should be chayim. No! The Torah is something that doesn't require substantiation by an ice. And therefore, the mitzvah of Elav Tishman does not apply to the prophecy of Moshe Rabbein. Let's take this a little further. What could a Navi do? What can't a Navi do? So if you look in the Rambam, look at number 16, in Hilchas Yisoy Dei HaTorah, Perak Tess, the Rambam says that our tradition is, Ein Navi Rashoi Lechadesh Dover Meata. Ein Navi, if a Navi comes and says, you know, you know, 
Har Sinai, you guys left too soon. You were Tinoi Kabarech mi Beis HaSefer. You missed the 614th mitzvah. The 614th mitzvah is that every Wednesday night, I'm not going to say, right? The 614th, you missed it, you ran out too soon. So what do we do to the Navi? Schaiv Misa, knock him off. A Navi cannot add on to the Torah. What if a Navi says, oh, Navi says, Tefillin? Eh, Tefillin was only until the Industrial Revolution. But after the Industrial Revolution, you don't have to... You knock the Navi's finished. The Navi can't add, a Navi can't take away. So what could the Navi do? Take a look in the Rambam, number 16, Halacha Beis. Then why does God tell us to listen to the Navi and shift him? Says the Rambam, third line, Loi lasso is das, he can't change the religion. Elo letzado is al Torah. The Navi could say, learn better, daven better, put on the tefillin more carefully. Like the last prophet Malachi says, Zichru Torah as or the Navi could say, matters of discretion. The Navi could say, go to this store, shop in this store. Or don't shop in this store. Or make a war today, or don't make it. Or build a wall, or don't build a wall. That you could listen to the Navi. So what's the role of a Navi? A Navi could tell you, be more careful in mitzvah observance. Or he could tell you, as a temporary measure, to do something discretionary. Like the Navi could say, you know, this year you should exercise more. So the Navi tells you that, right, you listen. Now if you look carefully at the Rambam, the Navi doesn't even have the authority to tell you to do anything discretionary permanently. The Navi can't say, from now on, Klal Yisrael, they have to jog three times a week forever. No, Navi can't be masaking that. Might be a good idea, but the Navi can't be masaking that. The Navi can't be masaking that. The question is, I mean, that means that the Navi is really handcuffed. He can't add to the Torah. He can't take away. He can't even make new safeguards to the Torah. A Navi is not authorized to say that you have to, um, because you might come to uh, write on Shabbos, not only you're not a write, you can't move a pencil. Navi can't do that. The only thing the Navi could do is discretionary, temporarily as a Hirasha. And yet we know that Bezdin and Chachamim could enact permanent safeguards to the Torah. For example, you know the Rambam, if you look at number 18, the Rambam Hilchas Mamrim, should say Parak Bez Halachates, the Rambam says like this, if Bezdin has the authority to make safeguards, then where does the law of Loi Sigram Yimenu and Loi Saisif come in? The Torah says don't add to the Torah. So for instance, uh, is one allowed to eat, instead of putting Cheerios in your milk, pieces of chicken in your milk? Are you allowed to eat chicken and milk midday raisa? Yeah? What? Yeah. Chicken and milk, you can eat midday raisa, but not mid rabbanon. The rabbanon prohibited oif and chalaf. Says the Rambam, how do they have the right to do that? Aren't they adding to the Torah? Says the Rambam, if the Chachamim say that you misunderstood the Torah, when the Torah said, Lo Savasho, Gadiba, Chalevi, Mai, it didn't just mean don't eat meat and milk. Chicken is the same thing. If the Chachamim say a new interpretation of Torah that Moshe didn't tell us, they can't do that. If the, if the Chachamim say the Torah prohibits chicken and milk, they have no right to do that. But if they come and say the Torah permits chicken and milk, we are making a safeguard lest people think that if you're allowed to eat chicken and milk, then you're allowed to eat a wild animal and milk like a deer, which you can't. And then people are going to come to eat milk and meat, so the Chachamim can make a safeguard and permanently establish the halacha that basar oif b'chalav is also, and that's right, today we're now going to have chicken and milk to the extent that if you eat chicken, you've got to wait six hours before you have milk. So we have a steer in the Rambam. Why is it that Bezdin could permanently enact a safeguard and say for all times, you're not allowed to have chicken and milk, and a Novi is completely handcuffed. The only thing a Novi could do is he could tell you, you know, learn better. And he could tell you, you know, I think for a few weeks, you should, you know, take care of yourself better. He could tell you discretionary things temporarily. Why could Chachamim enact permanent Hakanos and Nevi'im don't even have the authority to enact a temporary takana or anything permanent at all.
It says the Sefer, Yisamachav, Mamish Ga'inos, an amazing thing. According to everything we learned so far, what's the mitzvah to listen to the Navi? What two words? A love Tishmon, you have to listen to the Navi. And what's the essential ingredient when you're required to listen to the Navi? What does the Navi have to do? He has to make a miracle. Ah, oh, that means an essential ingredient in listening to the Navi is he has to make a miracle. So that means a Navi could only tell that generation to do something. You know why? Because only that generation saw the miracle. The next generation says, Yeshaya Yermia. I don't have to listen to you. I have to listen to you. But I'm not required with the strength of Chayiv Misev De Shamayim of Elof Tishma. You know why? Because I didn't see your miracle. A Navi's power emanates from the ice that the Navi makes. And therefore only those who are privy to see the ice are responsible to follow the directives of the Navi. And the next generation who doesn't see the ice in my face could say, you know what, I'll take your advice, it's probably very reasonable, and I will listen, but I'm not bound with the strength of a love tishman. And that is why Yeshaya, Yermio, Yechesko, they could say Zichu Taras Moshe, or they could tell you to jog for a few weeks, but they cannot permanently enact even a safeguard. Because the second generation will say, why do I have to listen to you? Because of the ice you made for my father? My father saw it, I didn't see it. But a Chacham's power does not emanate from an ice in my face. A Chacham's power emanates from his wisdom. His wisdom never ceases, it never fades, and therefore all generations are bound to listen to the Chacham. So the Yosef Yisam Achav says, this difference that we're making now, is also explained by the Raga Chavar. That a Navi's Kayach comes from the Asiyas Hois, from making a miracle. So then only that generation is bound to listen to the Navi. But a Chacham, he's a Chacham, to this generation, to the next generation, and to later generations. In fact, if you look in the Yushalmi, look at number 22, Masech the Brachos, the Yushalmi says like this, says the Yushalmi, God has two emissaries. He has Nevi'im and he has Chachamim. It's like a king who sends two messengers overseas. To one messenger he says, I want you to know, no one has to listen to you unless you show your ID. <coughs> and to the other one he says, I want you to know that everyone has to listen to you even without the ID. Says the Yushalmi, that's like the Navi and the Chacham. A Navi you only have to listen to because of the ice. Without the ice, he's no better than any other person. But a Chacham, you have to listen to him because of his inherent quality. And then it, whether he has an ice, doesn't have an ice, you have to listen to him. Ah, so Rabbi Isai, now we understand. You know why if somebody doesn't listen to Megillah Sestam and Purim, they're not chayat misav de shamayim, but they're violating the word of the Navi. The word of the Navi, which Navi? Mordechai and Esther? I never saw them make a miracle. So, yeah, I have to follow the word of the Navi, but I'm not bound by a love tishmon. That's why you're not chayiv misa if you miss Megillah Sester. You're not chayiv misa if you violate Mimtsai Chefzicha. You're not chayiv misa if you violate Oineg Shabbos. What do you mean by Yeshaya said? The Karas of Shabbos Oineg. Yeah, Yeshaya said it. He was a great man. But the strength of his command was emanated from his eyes. I didn't see the eyes. So, I have to listen, but there's no mitzvah they love tishmon. When does the Mishnah say that if someone violates the word of a Navi, the Chai of Misa? That's if the Navi makes a miracle and you see the miracle and you don't listen, then you Chai Misa Videsh But let's talk about, by the way, this is an amazing thing. Let's take a look very quickly. Number 24, the Gemara Megillah, Davzayin Amad Aleph. When Esther wrote Megillah Esther, look at this. Shalcha lohem Esther lechachamim. Esther sent a letter to the sages. Kisvuni ledairais. Write me for all generations. Wait a second. What's Esther? What does Esther do for a living? She sells used cars? What, what does she do? <laughs> She's a Navi. She's a Navia. She's asking permission to write down Megillah Esther? God told her to write it. What does she need permission for? And she's asking Chachamim, she's a Navi. 
The answer is, she was able to write it, because she's a Navi. But she wants to write it L'dayrois. L'dayrois? A Navi can't establish something for Dairois. To establish something for Dairois, you need Chachamim. So Esther says, Shalcha Esther L'chachamim. Kisvuni L'dayrois. But let's talk about the Adoin Hanavim, Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu does not need to substantiate his prophecy through miracles. His prophecy is inherently substantiated because we saw God speak to him. Listen to this. It's Ayam and Ayra. Says probably the most famous Ramban in all of Chumash, the Ramban at the end of Parshas Boy, that why is it that God made miracles in Mitzrayim and he doesn't continue to make miracles in every generation? Says Ramban, God doesn't have to prove himself in every generation. God made miracles in the times of Mitzrayim. And then God said, in order that you never forget... Dam, Tzfardeya, Kinim, Aroiv, Dever, Kriyas Yamsuf, Makas Bechayrois, I will give you a host of mitzvahs that will remind you and validate and authenticate that these miracles took place. So therefore God says, you know how you'll never forget the miracles of Mitzrayim? I'm going to give you a prohibition that's so strict that if you violate your Yechayi Kares, and that is don't eat chametz on Pesach. Why? Because it's very important that you remember all of the miracles of Mitzrayim. And better bring a carbon Pesach. So you think to yourself, oh, it's only a Mitzvah Saseh. Big deal if I violate a Mitzvah Saseh. Oh, it's a very big deal. Someone who doesn't bring the carbon Pesach is Chayef Kares. Why? God says, I don't want you to forget the miracles of Mitzrayim. And Hashem says, you know what? You still may forget. So you take those miracles and you write it in a box and put it on your arm, opposite your heart, and put it on your head every morning. So this way you know that for the last 3,300 years, Jews have been recalling the miracles in the time. But you know what? You're still going to forget. So I want you to take strings and put it on your clothing so that all day long you remember that for the last 3,300 years, Jews have been thinking about the miracles of the time. But you still might forget. So every door that you walk through, you put those miracles on the door. You still might forget. So every Friday night, before you put a morsel of food in your mouth, you declare that I took you out of my time. And at seven days a year, you sit in a box, in a hut, to remember I took you out of my time. So you can't breathe, you can't walk four cubits, you can't do anything, you can't say one word without being bombarded with the miracles of Mitzrayim. Wait a second. Are the miracles of Mitzrayim authenticating the Torah? Or are the mitzvahs of the Torah validating and authenticating that those miracles happened? It's the Torah and the mitzvahs that imbue authenticity that those miracles happened. So points out the Sefer Yislam Achav, an unbelievable thought. The relationship of Nisim to regular Nevi'im is the exact opposite relationship of the relationship of Moshe Rabbeinu to the miracles of Mitzrayim. All other Nevi'im, Elisha is validated as a Navi because he brought the kid back to life. The miracle validates the Navi. But Moshe Rabbeinu, he's not validated by the miracles. He, being a reality, because we saw God spoke to him, whatever he tells us happened is authenticated through Him. So while every other Navi is authenticated through the miracles, Moshe Rabbeinu the Navi authenticates the miracles of Mitzrayim. How do I know God took us out of Egypt? Because we have mitzvahs ha that authenticate and validate it. That's an amazing thought. Think about it. We don't use the miracles of Mitzrayim to authenticate anything, just the opposite. It's the mitzvahs ha that we know are true because we saw God give them to Moshe. Those mitzvahs authenticate the miracles of Mitzrayim. So it comes out that what imbues veracity into the miracles is the Torah itself. The Torah imbues the Nisei Mitzrayim with authenticity. That is why the same way we have an obligation to relate to our children the Torah, we have an obligation to relate to our children not the miracles of Elisha, the miracles of Yeshaya, the miracles of Yirmiyahu, 
We don't, there's no mitzvah in the Torah to tell our kids that um, Yeshua Benun made the walls of Yerichai fall down. No such mitzvah. Because those miracles, if anything, validated Yeshua. But we have a mitzvah to tell our children about the miracles of Mitzrayim. Because those miracles are imbued with truth through the Torah itself. It's a chilek of the Torah. It's revelation of Torah. The revelation of Mitzrayim, the miracles of Mitzrayim, are giluyim of Torah. The principles of Emuna, the principles of God's existence, God's providence, are re- were revealed in Mitzrayim and are authenticated through Moshe Rabbeinu and the Torah itself. So it comes out, what are miracles of Mitzrayim? They are revelation of Torah. Ah, oh, the revelation of Torah? They're Torah? You know who's the only one who could perform them? Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was the only one. If the miracles of Mitzrayim are authenticated through the Torah, you need the Kayach HaTorah, you need the power of Moshe's prophecy to imbue them with that truthfulness. In other words, if you take a look, I would challenge you, Rabbi Isai, that if you look at the last psukim in the Torah, which perhaps are very, very fundamental psukim, if I challenge you to think about them, I would venture to say that nobody knows what they mean. There's a simple reading of the Pesachim. Look at number 34 for a minute. V'loi kam navi oid Yisrael. There was never a prophet like Moshe. Asher yedoi Hashem panim opanim. That knew God face to face. So we would expect, ah, oh, there was never a prophet like Moshe, and therefore, Moshe was the only one who could give us Tyra. That's not what the Chumr says. Because there was never a prophet like Moshe, therefore he was able to do the Isis, and the Moifsim that God did, and the Yad HaChazaka, and the Moira HaGadol, that Moshe did, Le'enei Kol Yisrael. Ma Shmita Eichel Ar Sinai. The Torah says Moshe was the greatest prophet. What in the world does that have to do with all the miracles in Mitzrayim? I need a big prophet to do miracles? God could do miracles through anybody. The answer is the miracles in Mitzrayim are revelation of Torah. And for it to be revelation of Torah, you need the level of prophecy of the Adoin Hanavim, the only one who could elevate something into Torah. So Rabbi Sai, ready for this? Hold on to your socks. Try to hold your, you know, keep your composure. Don't lose it. You know, your families need you. Okay? How many Makos were there? Ten Makos. Plus, Ditzach Adash Biachav. It's another three. And yet if you look in the Haggadah, there's a three-way machlik is Tanan. Rabbi Yossi Haglili says, look at number 29, ten makos in Mitzrayim. But on the, now, the makos in Mitzrayim were done, what? Be'etzba, with a finger. The makos on the Yamsuf were done with a hand. So if there are ten makos in Mitzrayim, and there's only one finger, there must have been how many on the Yamsuf? Fifty. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Haglili. Says Rabbi Eliezer, no. Every makah had four parts. That means there were 40 in Mitzrayim and 200 on the Yam. Says Rabbi Kiva, no. Every Makkah had five parts. That means there were 50 in Mitzrayim, 250 al Yam. Comes along the Heligas Vasemos. And he says, what's this Machloikis? Who cares? 50, 250, 3. Says this They're all true. Three. Ten. I'm saying. Rabbi Yossi Haglili, 10 and 50. What's 10 and 50? 60. Rabbi Lezer, 40 and 200. 60 and 240, 300. Rabbi Akiva, 50, 250, 300. 600. Plus the 10 Mako is 10, 6, 10. The Tzachadash Rechav, 3, 613 Mako is in Mitzrayim. Now it's Ayim Benoira. If you add up all of the Makos, you get Taryag ma- ma- Makos. Taryag Makos? What's the Indian of Taryag Makos? Because the Nisei Mitzrayim were revelations of Torah that can only be authenticated through Adon Hanavim, Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe is not authenticated by the Makos. Moshe authenticates the Makos. Moshe imbues the Makos with Gilu Shal Torah. That is why the Makos were done with what? Etzba Elohim. What does the Pasuk say about the Luchais? Kesuvim be Etzba Elohim. How many Asers Hadibros are there? Ten. 
How many of them, the mitzvahs are alluded to in the Aser Sadebrais? 613. How many makos are there? 10. How many makos are contained in the 10 makos? All 613. Why? Says the Sfasemes, the makos were revelations of Torah. The, the makos do not authenticate Moshe. Moshe imbues, he instills credibility and authenticity into the makos themselves. What's Rabbi, Yossi, what's Rabbi Huda doing? Comes Rabbi Huda and he says the following. We know that Torah has to be transmitted in a certain way. How do we transmit Torah? Through simonim, through mnemonics, through acronyms, through Rashi Tevas, through tricks. Like the Gemara says in Erevin on, on, on number 35, on Daphne Dauram Amar of Chizda, ain't Torah, nicknames, Ella, the simonim. Torah is delivered, is transmitted through simonim. Comes Rabbi Huda, and Rabbi Huda says, don't make a mistake and think that these miracles in Mitzrayim were like miracles that authenticate the Torah, that authenticate Moshe Rabbeinu, the same way Yeshaya makes a miracle to authenticate him, Moshe made miracles to authenticate him. No, these miracles were not just Isais. These miracles are Torah. They're a revelation of Torah, imbued with Torah through... Moshe Rabbeinu! And therefore, the same way Torah has to be transmitted with Simonim, the Makos, which are revelations of Torah, must be transmitted through Simonim, says the Sefer Yisam Achav. That is why the Rambam emphasizes that the night of Pesach, make sure, don't just tell your kids, yeah, Mitzrayim, it was like a thunder and lightning and, and, and song and dance and all kinds of unbelievable supernatural things. No! You have to tell them that God was preparing the world for the truths of the Torah. These are revelations of Torah. And you better tell them that you know who conducted and performed these miracles. Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was the one who instilled and infused the Makos with the Amita Shel Torah. And that is why Rabbi Huda was noising Bahem Simonim. And the learning tonight should be L'Zeicher Nishmas of Chanoich Ben Tzvi Yehuda, Nesham Shem and Aliyah. Thank you everyone for coming. Shkayach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.